Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Wednesday, December the 20th, 2023. Over the weekend, um, I looked at uh, a number of famous people and one of them was um, Bill Gates. I looked at him very briefly and I sort of mentioned that uh, his natal son is about about to be aspected by Jupiter because you know he's got his son in early Scorpio, and Jupiter is in early Taurus. And uh, next weekend he's got um, Jupiter opposition his son, and he has got natal transiting Mars is um, semi square his son. And I thought, well, that that might have an impact on him. Um, now, as far as the news on Bill Gates at the moment. Um, you know, there's one story about him t- talking about artificial intelligence. Um, there's another story, um, I think it was a Wall Street Journal that reported it, and it talked about um, a picture of him and um, a Polish model. Um, and of course, it was something, a photograph, I think, was arranged by um, Jeffrey Epstein. I-, I don't think this story is um, is a big deal but let me just give you um, a sense of what it's what it's about Um, so let's uh, look at look at this story this is in the what is it this is the daily beast and it's titled jeffrey epstein encourage models to snap photos with bill gates WSJ, that's the Wall Street Journal, and this was published December the 18th, 2023. And it says, Jeffrey Epstein leered victims by claiming he could get them work with the Gates Foundation, the Wall Street Journal reports. One Polish model said she accompanied Epstein to Microsoft founder Bill Gates' Seattle office in 2014. I think actually that was in March 2014. Afterward, uh, Epstein's accountant emailed her a letter of support for a visa stating that she planned to survey the Gates Foundation's work in Africa. Um, Then it goes on to say... um, Meanwhile, a Russian model claimed that Epstein encouraged her to share photos of herself with Gates on social media. Epstein tried unsuccessfully to connect himself to Gates by any means possible, including spontaneously bringing in people for photos with Bill, whom Bill did not know or or interact with further, a Gates rep said. Mr. Gates only ever met with Epstein for for philanthropic purposes, which he regrets. So... I think this story um, is a bit of a nothing. I don't think it um, amounts to much or even amounts to anything. But uh, nonetheless, I um, I did um, want to look at the charts of um, Bill Gates and Jeffrey Epstein. Um, you know, have a look, see if there's any connection um, between the two charts. I mean, I have done this before. Um, but in the light of this uh, story in the Wall Street Journal, uh, doesn't seem to be any harm in going over it again. Um, I also want to look at what's going on in Bill Gates's horoscope. I want to look at his solar return and um, look at his Vedic chart um, and some of his um, solar arc directions. Um, but before I do that, um, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today which is Wednesday, um, December the 20th, um, 2023. So let's, there we go. There is Bill Gates and there is um, the late um, Jeffrey Epstein. Um, okay, so what's going on today? I am not saying that it's a particularly dramatic day. Um we can see that the moon is in Aries. So remember, this is the moon is in Aries at noon for today, December the 20th at New York. New York. So, you know, with the moon in Aries, uh, it encourages us to be assertive, um, uh, particularly um, on an emotional level. You know, our feelings come out. We want to express our feelings. We want action. Um uh, but uh, I'm wondering, you know, how much support uh, the moon actually has. 
you can see that the moon's moon in Aries it's made just made a, a square of Mercury. Uh, so moon square Mercury, um, that moon square Mercury is going to be more relevant uh, if you're in Europe and Australasia than in um, than in America. In America, when you get up this morning, it, this chart will be largely history. But if you're in, you know, if you're in America, and if you're in Europe, Australasia, Australia, New Zealand, there may be, there may be a certain sense of um, communication. There may be some communication issues. You know, the Moon and Mercury, as I keep saying, they are the two communication planets. The Moon is about emotional communication. Um, Mercury is about more sort of mental communication, and. The words might not come out right. You know, the things we say might be um, overly influenced by our feelings. And so we have to be careful about emotional outbursts. And we have to be aware of that other people can have their emotional outbursts. And if we see other people having their emotional outbursts, we shouldn't be upset. We shouldn't necessarily judge people um, by what they say, it may just be a passing phase caused by this um, this square between um, moon and the moon and Mercury. Um, if you're in America, in the Americas, I don't think it's such a big deal. I don't think you're going to feel much of that. Um, and th in fact, there may be a feeling that we we want things to happen with the moon and Aries, but we might not we might not really be able to um, apply ourselves. Um, now, while this is going on, there is another aspect. Um, here's Venus, here, here's Mars, here's Venus. Mars is at, well, noon New York is at uh, 1859 Sagittarius, and Venus is at 1857 Scorpio. So that means that the two planets are exactly 30 degrees apart. Now, there is some controversy about whether this aspect, the semi-sextile, is good or bad. Um, some texts will will describe it as a good aspect, but as far as I'm concerned, it is a bad aspect. All things being equal, or, or it's a it's a tense aspect. Um, you know, reason being is if you've got two planets 30 degrees apart, they're in different signs and they're in signs right next to each other. And very often signs that are right next to each other are very different. So Venus in Scorpio, Mars in Sagittarius. So Scorpio and Sagittarius don't really have much in common. Um, I mean, Scorpio is a water sign. It's a negative sign, um, obviously. Sagittarius, far sign, positive, obviously by definition. Um, so they're working in two very different ways. And Venus and Mars can represent two people. Mars in Sagittarius, someone who talks a lot, someone who, but talks a lot in a very animated way, someone who's very, uh, probably shouldn't have said talked a lot. I mean, it's, in fact, with Mars and Sagittarius, it's arguably more about action than words. Um, but someone who is quite quite dynamic, you know, but also who's quite tactless, you know, the words just come tumbling out, doesn't care who he or she offends. You know, Venus in Scorpio is much more reserved, um, brooding, um, secretive. And so Venus and Mars don't get on with each other. And this might be this might represent a personality clash. And maybe when you look at what's going on today, you have to perhaps ask yourself, who do you identify with? Do you identify with Mars in Sagittarius or Venus in Scorpio? Now, I understand that Mars is a male planet and Venus is a female planet. So you could say, so if you're, if you're female, you're more likely to identify with the Venus. If you're male, you're more likely to identify with, with the Mars. But I don't think that's an absolute thing. Um, so there is this, there is this clash. Um, and this will be reflected in what I say when I talk about the, um, when I go through the 12 signs. You know, Mars um, rules, um, rules Scorpio and 
and Aries. So if you're Scorpio and Aries, you know, you're more likely to be Mars. And so you have to think, who is Venus who you might offend? Or if you're um, Libra, Taurus or Libra, ruled by Venus, uh, so you're Venus, then who's Mars? Who's, who's the loudmouth? So those are the kind of things you have to think about. But even if you're not um, Aries, Scorpio, Libra or Taurus, um, I think you're still going to be affected by this um, Venus-Mars semi-sextile. It's just two energies that don't really get on with each other. Uh, I'm not saying there's going to be an out-and-out clash, but there's just an issue. They just don't get on. And how do we work that out? Is it a situation where we need to avoid the problem or do we need to confront the problem and perhaps um, learn from it? Now there is another rather difficult aspect and that involves Mercury and Venus. So you can see that Mercury is at 327 uh, Capricorn and Venus is at 1857 Scorpio. In other words they're exactly 45 degrees apart. So 45 degrees that's an eighth of the circle cake analogy, take a cake, cut it into eight equal parts. Um, uh, so one of those slices is going to be 45 degrees. Um, Mercury and Venus may be about saying the wrong thing. And when we've got the fact that Mars is also semi-sextile Venus and we've got Mercury semi-square Venus, plenty of scope for upsetting people. Um, you know, Mercury Venus is also connected with art, um, and perhaps you know, particularly as Venus is in its detriment, and Mercury is semi-square Venus, it might be about bad art. Um, so, if you're an artist, um, maybe you should think carefully before whatever putting oil to canvas, because you perhaps have the capacity for creating something terrible, or if you're doing um uh home decoration you know you think you know about interior design and you start you start doing stuff with venus in scorpio mercury retrograde um it could be yeah it could be a real disaster you know and then you know also i don't know if you're in in america you know one of the sort of bizarre things i notice uh, you know about america is that people really are really into very often they're into their christmas decorations but their christmas decorations are sometimes over the top you know these huge 10 feet tall blow up santas and santas sledge and you know in their, in their yard guards yards gardens whatever they like to just strew all this sort of Christmas garbage everywhere. And, you know, sometimes it's quite impressive, but very often it just seems a bit perfunctory. Someone wants to stick their their massive polar bear in their front. <laughs> you know, yeah, our neighbour's got, got a polar bear with um, two penguins sitting on the polar bear and the penguins are fishing. And you're thinking, well, that polar bear is very restrained, isn't it? I mean, you've got two penguins. What the polar bear? Well, I suppose polar bears don't actually. Are, polar bears are, I suppose, in the north, uh, in the in the North Pole, aren't they? And the penguins are in the south. So, okay, there's not in real life. There's not much scope for polar bears eating penguins. Um, but uh, you know, you have to you have to watch out if you're one of those people that likes to strew. Um, giant Christmas decorations around with Mercury um, semi-square Venus, it, it may look awful. So consider aesthetics today with Mercury semi-square Venus because you may, may make choices about art um, which um, actually um, are not very good choices. Okay, so what I want to do now is look at the 12 signs. So... Uh, these are my forecasts for today, uh, which is um, Tuesday, December, sorry, for today, which is Wednesday, December the 20th, 2023. Aries. The moon is now in Aries, your star sign. You're feeling a lot more confident and you're able to push forward with your agenda. However, Venus and Mars are now 30 degrees apart, and as a result, relations with other people could be a problem. 
Fire hits water and you have two completely different approaches. You either accept the differences or you go your separate ways. Taurus. In some respects, you want to, um, you know, you want to sort of distance yourself from things because, you know, things are changing and you perhaps uh, need time to think. But... uh, Other people can't be avoided, and you might find that certain individuals are seriously annoying. They just don't respect the permanence and fixity of the Torean experience. But what seems to be a threat might actually be an opportunity. Gemini. The moon is now moving through a sector of your solar chart connected with hopes and wishes. You're aware of what you want, but you might feel that you haven't got the connections to make it happen. It's a situation where you have to be persistent and rely on the laws of chance. The more times you throw the dice, the greater the chances of throwing a six. Cancer. You're making solid progress, especially in terms of pushing forward um, with your ambitions. You're in the right place and you've made the right preparations. However, the external environment is still a bit of a mess. It's not your fault and you perhaps have to wait for other people and perhaps other agencies to sort themselves out. Leo, you're trying to figure things out. There are loose ends and perhaps a few mysteries. And as a result, it's difficult to make plans. And matters aren't made easier by other people's inconsiderate behaviour. The best approach is to step back and see the broad picture. What feels super important may actually be super trivial. Virgo. You're feeling a bit prickly. You can't completely relax, especially when you're having to deal with other people. There's a lack of rapport and not much in a way of caring and sharing. Also, verbal communications can so easily be misunderstood. The most sincere thing to do is to accept the situation and to enjoy your own company. Libra. Venus, your ruler, is exactly 30 degrees from Mars. There's a possibility of irritation, feeling that you're in an environment where you can't assert yourself, where other people are pulling the strings. But really, you have to work with the situation, be ready to adjust and perhaps also learn some important lessons. Scorpio, from a financial perspective, there are things you want to do, perhaps going through paperwork or finding ways of making and saving money. But don't be in too much of a hurry. Things can be worked out in their own quiet way. Looking at relationships, you and someone else have different views of the world, which can't easily be matched. Sagittarius, you're energetic and creative and you feel that the time is right for action. This may be true, but you have to consider the impact you are having. Some people aren't amused by the -the over-the-top style of some Sagittarians. You therefore have to consider their sensibilities and, if possible, use some discretion. Capricorn. Some people understand you and and other people don't. In general, people who you've recently got to know haven't figured you out and the things you say may not make much sense. However, people who you know and trust will certainly get the message, which raises the question of whether they actually appreciate this message. Indeed, partners could have a will of their own. Aquarius In the Aquarian solar chart, the sun has a special connection with relationships, and as the sun moves towards the last degree of Sagittarius, partners could feel distant and detached, as if they are moving from one place to another. For your part, short-distance travel might seem essential, but maybe it's just a waste of gas or petrol, depending on where you are. Pisces. 
As we move towards the long weekend, many people are slowing down and are thinking about fun and relaxation. But not you. As far as you're concerned, there are things to do and matters connected with work and money may be important to you. But in the process, you might hurt someone's feelings. Okay, so I've looked at the day from a perspective of astrology. And so what I want to do now is turn to the um, I Ching. So the question I've asked is, you know, what is, uh, what is Wednesday going to be like for people watching um, this video? And the first hexagram I got was hexagram 31, which is influence. So what we're trying to do here uh, is have an influence on our environment. We're trying to have an influence on, um, on other people, the people around us. Uh, and that seems fine. Uh, on the surface, it seems to be quite a, quite a fortunate um, hexagram. You know, we're, we're trying to assert ourselves. Um, we're trying to get people to listen to our message. But what we need to do is we need to listen to the moving lines. Um, so in the I Ching, when you do a, when you when you cast the I Ching, you get some lines don't move, other lines do move. I really want to put up a video explaining all this. I I will very soon. Uh, don't worry. Uh, the bottom line moves right here. And what uh, the I Ching talks about here is movement in the toe. I think movement in the big toe. Uh, so that's about our desire to influence the world. But what impact are we actually having on the outside world? The sort of image I get here is sort of a sleeping body, almost a dead body, not quite a dead body, um, a sleeping body, completely immobile. And then suddenly you see the big toe move. It, it's, it's like the beginning. It's like the starting. This body is starting to wake up slowly, but only the big toe is moving. This body is having no real impact on the outside world because its big toe can't really do much. Uh, so we have to accept that to begin with, we are not, we are not going to have much influence. Uh, you know, we've got, we certainly, we want to have an influence, but it's not going to happen. So if you tell people what to do, you try to work things out, particularly at the beginning of the day, uh, you know, work and your family, what people might not, might not listen, or you might just not have the ability to really assert yourself, um, then we get the third line moves. And, you know, in the I Ching, third line is also um, unfortunate. Uh, it's, it's often unfortunate. And so the third line is about sort of moving ahead, trying to, trying to make things happen. But we trip over. Uh, uh, we just can't get it together. Um, so we end up just perhaps making a fool of ourselves. So we want to influence the world and we're starting to influence the world in a very small way but we're not ready we're not ready for leadership here we're not ready to really make things happen to really assert ourselves uh, especially um, at the beginning of the day now these two lines move um, the, the, the bottom line and the third line up so this bottom trigram is you know you can see look at the bottom three lines it looks a bit like a table doesn't it that's that's about that's about stillness it's 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 very solid and earthy and it transforms and as you can see uh it's uh it's into a new hexagram a different hexagram uh and it we move to following. So you can see the, the top three lines have stayed the same, but the bottom three lines um, have moved, you see? Top three lines have the same. Bottom three lines have shifted a bit. 
And so uh, the f following, it, it, this is about thunder. So you move from the bottom three lines, which were associated with with earth, to something associated with thunder. And it, this is about following. And in the end, we can get a following. We can start doing stuff uh, to make people listen to us so we'll get what we want so we, we we want to influence the world but we will you know but in the end we will we will do it because it moves to 17 following but how do you actually get a following uh how do you get people to listen to you it's not about just just screaming your head or barking orders it's not like that at all uh indeed it's about it's about listening to listening to one's feelings and and um the Wilhelm translation of the I Ching actually suggests that, uh, in a way, if we want a following, we must be able to follow. If we can't follow, how can we expect people to follow us? Um, and I think part of it is actually listening. Listening to the room, listening to society, listening to the world, listening to what trends are available. Uh, you know, because people... People don't listen to stuff that's completely alien to themselves. There has to be a basic sympathy before in, to, to the speaker before anything can actually happen. Um, so this influ the, the first hexagram thirty one influence you know where we shouldn't really be doing anything is perhaps when we're starting to listen listen to what people want, how to express ourselves, and then we're following we eventually understand what makes the people around us tick. And then we can moderate our message, um, we can change who we are, and as a result, people will start following us. So if at the beginning of the day you find it impossible to make make people listen to you, don't panic. It's not, it's not about shouting, it's not about embarrassing yourself, just... Try to understand what why people might not be follow, might not be listening to you, and then make the adjustments. And then, in the end, um, they will, I believe, um, follow you, and um, you'll you'll get what you want, and um, you will be able to, I think, end a day um, in a position of uh, of some leadership. Okay, so that's the I Ching, and now I want to go back to back to the astrology, uh, and I wanted to I wanted to look at um, Bill Gates's chart. Uh, I've already, you know, I've, I looked at his Bill, Bill Gates's chart um, over the weekend um, at the beginning, you know, uh, and I did think that there might be some stuff going on. Um, for him, I mean, it's it was connected with his son. So there's his son in Scorpio, and uh, I saw that you know, at the end of we on the Christmas weekend, uh, you know, he's not doesn't just have Jupiter opposition his son, uh, but he has Mars, um, he has Mars semi square his son, um, and this might suggest some kind of irritation um, for him. And then I saw um, that there was this Wall Street Journal article, and um, the, this 2000 and for, apparently this 2014 photograph of him, I think, with a Polish model. I don't think it's a big deal. Um, in fact, I'm sure it's not a big deal. But um, nonetheless, um, I thought it would be a good, good idea to look at um, Bill Gates and uh, perhaps how he relates to. Uh, how, how he related to Jeffrey Epstein um, from his horoscope why would he have got involved with Jeffrey Epstein what are his what are his weaknesses uh, I mean that's always a question you know you know where are his weaknesses um, I, I would have said uh, that one weakness perhaps that Bill Gates has is that if you look at his Neptune, uh, his Neptune is square his ascendant. Um, that, uh, that might make him vulnerable uh, to, to deception, perhaps, 
or rather to people, to someone like Jeffrey Epstein. Um, Jeffrey Epstein was clearly trying to, um, well, as far as I can see, was trying to draw Bill Gates into some kind of web. That seems to be it. And so Neptune, uh, square, his ascend- square Bill Gates' ascendant, might, might make him vulnerable to that. Uh, uh, particularly as you know, uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, seemed to be seems to be, you know seem to have this strange influence on people, which I'll be going into in a moment. And also notice that um, Bill Gates has an exact Venus Saturn opposition. Sorry, Venus Saturn conjunction in Scorpio. Uh, this does suggest certain issues uh, in relationships. You know, Venus is the planet of relating. Um, and Bill's, Bill Gates' Venus is in Scorpio. Scorpio is in its, in its detriment. Uh, so in one sense, it's not very well placed. Having said that, um, Bill Gates' Venus is um, mutu- in mutual reception to Mars. So there is his Venus in Scorpio, in the sign of Mars. Mars is in Libra. Uh, the sign of Venus. So Venus and Mars are in mutual reception. Uh, that is a major mitigator. I mean, if it wasn't for that, I think his Venus would be would be a real disaster. And I I would guess Venus in that Venus square that Venus mutual reception Mars does give him a, a certain amount of charisma, uh, which would have been I assume really important for him in terms of building up Microsoft, but especially in the in the early days. Nonetheless, we can't avoid the fact that his Venus is conjunct Saturn. Uh, that is difficult. Uh, it makes relationships difficult. It may in- it may kind of encourage him to see relationships in the wrong way, uh, to perhaps focus on um, the wrong details, and sort of it may uh, be emotionally. Um, emotionally um, restricting uh, can he really express himself um, and I, I I don't know I suppose he's 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 I know he's been through, I mean but I mean I suppose he's been through one marriage I mean, he's divorced now so um, but I suppose lots of people are divorced you can't just say oh Venus can junk Saturn he's divorced I don't know uh, um, nonetheless, uh, it could be problematic and uh, it may have made him vulnerable, perhaps, to someone like Jeffrey Epstein. Um, you know, how did how did Jeffrey Epstein really, how was he able to, you know, to get Bill Gates to take him seriously with his, even if it, if it was just a philanthropy? Uh, another point about Bill Gates's chart, um, we've got Mars close to the IC. Uh, Mars on the IC uh, is never very fortunate. And Mars is about, uh, it can be about domestic turmoil. And it's about privacy, certainly. People who have Mars on the IC really like to protect their privacy. Um, but it because you know as soon as anyone if the IC is the most private point in the chart, and as soon as anyone gets close to it, uh, they start they start uh, maybe getting aggressive. They say, you know, they want to protect that dark deepest point in their chart. Um, but it can make it difficult for people to just settle down and be happy with what with what they've got, be comfortable in a domestic setting. Mars may um, Mars may um, may disrupt that. Uh, and that Mars is opposition to the Moon. Uh, now that Moon in in itself is very fortunate because he's got Moon on the midheaven. That's great for dealing with the public. Uh, the Moon is the public on the midheaven. That's uh, that's that's very can be very successful. But the Moon is opposition Mars. Now that can mean trouble with women. Uh, moon is a sort of universal indicator of women of women. So issues with women i suppose that might uh might be about his 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 former wife i, I moon opposition mars perhaps marrying as an as, perhaps an assertive woman um and perhaps that 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 creating um creating a few problems uh from his perspective 
And then we have uh, Jeffrey Epstein's chart. Uh, so here's Jeffrey. Uh, uh, so here's Jeffrey Epstein's chart. Um, now, notice that uh, Jeffrey Epstein has uh, his moon at ten Aries. Now we don't know precisely where his moon is because he's. Uh, because he was, we, I don't have a birth time for him. So I've just taken the noon position of, of the moon. So his moon will be roughly between four Aries and 16 Aries. Um, but if we compare that with um, Bill Gates's chart, Bill Gates is in the middle, uh, Jeffrey Epstein on the outer ring. He's got his moon fairly close to Bill Gates's moon. Uh, Within six, seven degrees, I, I would guess. Uh, so that may rep have represented um, a link um, uh, between the two men that perhaps Jeffrey Epstein was able to manipulate. Uh, also, Jeffrey Epstein has a, a, a conjunction between um, Venus and Mars in Scorpio, sorry, Pisces. Uh, that is an incredibly slippery conjunction. Uh, it is it is charismatic in its own way. Uh, it's, it's, and I think it, the Venus, that Venus-Mars conjunction in Pisces was really what enabled him to uh, bring people into his web. Um, I don't know. Some might say, I don't know, if you're talking about fetishes, uh, you know, Pisces rules the feet. And if you look at pictures of, if you go, if you look for Jeffrey, if you Google Jeffrey Epstein and you you see this picture of, of um, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell um, massaging his feet, that comes up again and again. I don't know whether feet were important to... Um, uh, important to um, Jeffrey Epstein. Also, interesting talking about feet. Um, I mean, this is a sort of a side point. You know, Prince Andrew um, was a Pisces and um, is a Pisces. And there are lots of stories about um, um, Prince Andrew's foot fetish. Um, and maybe that is connected with Sun in Pisces. I don't know. That's just a piece of trivia. I don't know whether or not Prince Andrew really has a foot fetish, but maybe Sun in Pisces. That's nice, simple sun sign astrology for you. Um, okay, so uh, I'm not saying that uh, um, Jeffrey Epstein has a massive impact on Bill Gates's chart. I think the fact that he's Venus, he's got this Venus Mars, this Venus Mars conjunction. It does, it is trying, not not closely, but it's there. It does trine um, Bill Gates's Venus Saturn conjunction, and it may be at some level that Venus Mars was able to connect with all of the issues that. For Bill Gates and his Venus Saturn conjunction somehow, uh, and uh, that facilitated um, uh, Bill um, Jeffrey Epstein's ability to create this link um, with um, with Bill Gates. Also, uh, if you look at Bill Gates's chart, he has got his North Node at eighteen Sagittarius, uh, South Node at eighteen. 18 Gemini. So um, that I, I know that technically in the Placidus it's 11th house, but I would, because it's quite close, close enough to the 12th house cusp, I would have said that that south node has a 12th house feel to it. So Bill Gates's line of least resistance is um, that's the south node. 12th house, Gemini. Uh, so the south node would be, what he'd really like to do is just sort of get into his Gemini world of, part of him is Gemini world of um, ideas, maybe fantasies, 12th house, just that's perhaps 
something about the past or even previous incarnations, but his way forward for him, North Node in the sixth house in Sagittarius, uh, getting down to work, focusing on the details, but Sagittarian details, you know, bringing everything together, uh, understanding what's going on in the world, uh, you know, with that Sagittarian intuition, and then just putting in the action. Um, now, this nodal nodal uh, nodal axis is picked up by uh, by Jeffrey Epstein's Venus Mars conjunction. So he's got Ven- so uh, Venus Jeffrey Epstein Venus Mars conjunction is square the north and south nodes. Bill Gates is north and south nodes. So um, it may be that that Venus Mars uh, conjunction was was really hitting Bill Gates's nodal axis and sort of perhaps encouraging Bill Gates to drift back into the past or else uh, in some way Bill Gates might have made a mistake at an unconscious level to think that uh, Jeffrey Epstein was somehow the future. But, you know, maybe it is as the, the Gates representative said you know it was all about, about philanthropy uh and bill gates really thought that that jeffrey epstein was the way forward in a philanthropic sense with that venus mars and maybe that's it maybe bill gates was um was um mistaken uh, so i now quickly want to look at what's going on in bill gates's chart uh like right now uh, so I've already said that um, that you know this week you know he's got well the rest of the month he's got Jupiter opposition his son. I I don't think he's particularly happy at the moment. I think he's a bit he he he, he there's something he wants to he, he's trying to do something he's trying to respond perhaps with Jupiter opposition his son and it's really quite a bit difficult for him. He may be doing lots of different things and not being very comfortable with it and as i said in my video uh for for this week at the end of the week he's got um transiting mars is semi square his sun uh this is a time he could be accident prone um it, it's it's not a great time for him but it's very i mean this is very short term what about what about the broader picture so uh, I thought I'd look at his solar return. So this is when the sun returned to where it was when he was born. Um, and he was born in Seattle, um, Washington. Um, I do think that this solar return is actually quite difficult for him. Um, at the time of his solar return, uh, Jupiter, there was Jupiter at 11.15 Taurus, because there's his birthday, October the 28th. Jupiter was exactly the opposition Mars and Mercury. Uh, so we had, uh, that is, that's very uh, energetic, but not energetic in a nice way. I think uh, just putting energy into lots of things and perhaps being stuck, and perhaps a certain sense of feeling stuck, you know, wanting to do something and just can't do it. And there's the moon. The moon, yeah, it's nice in his chart that the moon is making a conjunction to Jupiter. That's great. But the thing is, when it makes that conjunction to Jupiter, um, it will be opposition, opposition his Mars, opposition his Mercury. So I think there's um, plenty of scope there for um, Bill Gates to have a difficult year. Also, uh, October the 28th coincided with a full moon. So he had a full moon on his birthday. So if you've got a full moon on your birthday, that can be um, that can be quite um, quite a difficult year. Uh, something has come to a head. Something something that perhaps you've you, you, you perhaps you didn't want to deal with. It's suddenly coming out into the open. Uh, so that could you know he, the truth. You know perhaps he'll see the truth about something. Um, so. It, it it could it could be a difficult and I think quite important year for him, um, and we should also remember that uh, on um, on November the eighteenth, so last month November the eighteenth, there was a new moon at twenty forty four Scorpio. Um, 
So there's Bill Gates's horoscope. So there was a new moon on his Venus-Saturn conjunction. Uh, so some issues relating to his Venus-Saturn conjunction um, may have been released by that new moon um, on November the 18th. I think that was actually quite an important new moon. Uh, finally, something about his solar arc direction. Solar arc directions, when you move all the planets in the, in the chart, one degree per year. Uh, so his solar arc directions for like... Um, for like now uh what what i find interesting these so this is where i've taken bill gates's chart but i've moved everything one degree for a year so how old is he now he's what 60 67 is that right he's born in 56 no 50 what, how old is bill gates born in 55 so he's going to be 68 i think yeah, born in 55, so he's just, just had his 68th birthday. So the solar arc direction, so what I was just interested in is um, his solar arc directed uh, Jupiter is currently at 646 Scorpio, uh, and he's got a Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. So this this Jupiter and Pluto conjunction um, over the last few years has been hitting his sun. Uh, let me just show you that. Um, Um, so there's a directed Jupiter-Pluto um, conjunction. It's been hitting his sun. Now, that did happen a couple of years ago. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, Jupiter-Pluto is about the desire for self-improvement. And so I think he's been hit by solar arc direction, a great desire to um, improve himself and his whatever his businesses and philanthropy that's what you know that's what he has really been focusing on he hasn't been able to relax there but now jupiter is opposition his um his son it's kind of picking up on this old um on what he's on on his last couple of years activities so jupiter opposition and then you've got as i said at the end of the week mars semi square his son, semi square his son so i'm do i do think that um it is a difficult time for him, and I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to know what, how, what, kind, what he's going to be doing over the weekend. Okay, that's Bill Gates and Jeffrey Epstein. Um, thank you, uh, um, uh, thank you for listening. Um, if you enjoyed this video, um, then uh, please um, like it. Uh, if you, if you're not subscribed and you enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe. And uh, if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. Thanks again for listening, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.